Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's rant on Shirley from Netflix about Shirley Chisholm, who was the first uh, black woman to run for president. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Heart in South Jersey. It's the Pineys, books 1 through 13, available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. Shirley was also the first uh, black uh, congresswoman, so that was a big deal. Lance Reddick is in it, the late, uh, great Lance. And, uh, you know, you know what it's going to be. It's going to be a biopic. Terrence Howard's in it, too. It's going to be a biopic about this era. This is the early 70s. She ran in 72. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was a time that, you know, she was a feminist, but she was a second wave feminist. So it wasn't like crazy, like the ones today. Um, and you know, you're still coming out of the civil rights era. So there is some racism and whatnot. So she was fighting for inner city kids, all that kind of stuff. Um, but she was very left leaning. She was elected to a very left-leaning district, very uh, uh, mostly black district, I think. Uh, that was uh, Stuyvesant in Brooklyn. I think it was the 12th district I was reading. March 22nd. But she's an interesting figure. Uh, written and directed by John Ridley. Uh, produced by Regina Gina King and starring Regina King. So, uh, the question is, why are they releasing this movie now? Like, why, why, why didn't you do this movie during the Obama administration? Like, I, I didn't really know Shirley Chisholm. Um, I don't know if I ever heard of her. I think I did, like once. Um, but you know, you know how these movies go. If it's if it's a political movie, and this is kind of a political movie. It'll be a biopic, but the biopics are never accurate for any political figure or any historical figure, really. You know, it's juiced up for the drama, but then it's also juiced up for the politics, probably. Probably. Judging by what I read on the, you know, uh, pages about Shirley, I mean, what, you know, what, she, she wasn't corrupt. She didn't seem to be too corrupt. I'm sure, you know, towards the end, they accused her of not siding. Uh, towards the end of her career, they, choose her, they, they accused her of not siding with the true lefties, which is always a purity test in, on the left side of politics. So, uh, so I'm kind of not surprised at that. And then by the end, like, her husband had gotten into a serious car accident and people were starting to make noise about her and it looked like she might lose the election. So she retired in... 83 and then made some noise about Reagan didn't like Reagan which you can believe because she was a lefty Democrat she fought for minimum wage and things like that but you got to understand this was at a time when this stuff was different it's not like it is now you know you didn't have wacky California candidates suggesting $50 an hour <laughs> you know you had people Suggesting minimum wage laws because they thought people were too poor and that would somehow solve it. Um, so, you know, how'd that work out? Yeah, right. But, um, so I don't think she's a malicious figure in history. But I think they're going to lionize her big time. I think this is, this is part of the move at a company like Netflix, I think, to deliver you that progressive sort of message, but package it in a different way. Like before, they they're just they were just so overt and smacking you over the head with the message. People were getting pissed off. This is a lot more subtle because it is based on real history. But do I trust Hollywood with real history? Oh no, not anymore. I used to. I used to think, oh, well, that's probably pretty close. Yeah, that's uh, usually not. But, yeah, I'm sure it makes a good story. A doomed presidential campaign. Um, 
and all the stuff she promoted because uh, they'll portray it i think as all the stuff she promoted oh that was all good oh imagine if she was president you know hey you know maybe some of the stuff was i didn't really look too close at her policies but um you know she she was against the draft so that was good i agree with that she was against uh war for the most part that was a time when democrats were more populist they were against things like war uh will they focus on that in 1972 a biopic in 1972 i didn't see one mumbling f about it in the trailer so it'd be interesting if they completely avoid vietnam that would be really interesting if they do that because i think that would have been a huge factor in 72. uh yeah I think it would have been a huge factor. Uh, bring the troops home, you know, end the war. Peace and love, man. Um, but we'll see, I guess. So, you know, you know how this goes, the three-act structure. It's a rise and fall. Yeah, not so much a fall, not so much a rise, but, you know, first act, she's already congresswoman, already making waves in Congress. And uh, they are... Uh, you know, they already treat her like a second-class citizen, but she's going to run for president. She's crazy. They tell her, you're crazy. I'm going to run anyway. And she does. And it's about, at first, you know, kind of looks okay. Her constituents love it. and Maybe she makes some inroads. She did get to go to the debate. That's good. Uh, if only the Democrats would allow that more often. This was still back at a time when they didn't quite control everything. But then again, who would have seen the debate? 72, most people had a TV or access to a TV. Um, so, she's, she's going to fight the system and then lose. But in the end, we all remember her. Although I didn't. But, uh, <laughs> so March 22nd on Netflix. Ah. Eh. You know, I, I think if you watch it for what it is, it's probably well produced. I like the music. The music's good. That's a good hour for music. Um, you know, don't watch it for as a substitute for reading about the history, though. I've learned that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then the end, you know, how she eventually retired. But I think it'll be lionizing her. Yeah, I think it'll probably lionize her up and down. You know, and but you know, read her Wikipedia entry. It didn't sound bad, but that's Wikipedia too. So, um, let's see what she says here. Regina King stars as Shirley Chisholm in Shirley, the story of the first black congresswoman and her trailblazing run for president of the United States. I don't know if that was so trailblazing, but she did run. Directed by John Ridley and co-starring Lance Riddick, Lucas Hedges, Brian Stokes, Mitchell. Christina Jackson, Dorian Crossmond, Missick, Amaria Vaughn, and Andre Holland, and Terrence Howard. The film chronicles Chisholm's audacious, boundary-baking 1972 presidential campaign. Well, that was the same year McGovern run, so that was a that was a crazy time. That was a crazy time. Um, I also read in the entry that she visited uh, George Wallace after he got shot. So I wonder if they'll show that. That would be an interesting scene. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's lots of drama here. There's lots of drama here. I mean, I think it could be good, you know, again, from a drama perspective. Uh, I don't trust the politics at all coming out of Netflix. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Anyhow, that's it for me, Tony D, and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for our more base takes. If you can find a more base take, and I say take it, did two live streams this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So tons to, tons to listen to if you missed it. Uh, all right, we'll see you in the next one.